Welcome to another wonderful presentation. I must admit that Jennifer uh, raised the bar last week for introducing speakers, and I thought, oh, God, why did she have to be so good? She was really good. Um, and the video of that one is, I just dumped it onto Dana's computer. We don't have it figured out yet how to get it onto the disc, but the disc will be available at some point in the library, and you will be able to see last week's if you missed that. This morning, I am introducing Susie Leo, um, I met Susie here at FCC about 12 years ago. Well, no, no, it hasn't been that long, in 2012. Um, and she said that she liked sitting in front of me because she could enjoy my voice while we were singing. We are both golfers, and I found that I knew that she had impeccable taste in sports, which makes her a really <laughs> wonderful person. Um, Susie and I played together. She plays a very sane game. I play a crazy, risky game. She's a better player than I am, a marvelous player. Um, but she's watched me make some really, really crazy shots that she turns her head so she doesn't have to see. We both enjoy singing. Uh, Susie's a member of the choir. And last year during uh, COVID, we ended up in the Garden Affinity Group, which was a fabulous experience as we went from house to house looking at each other's gardens. Susie took us on a wonderful tour of her neighborhood, and we saw some great gardens and met wonderful Whitey, um, who lives in her neighborhood and gives all kinds of, of uh, tours about trees and plants and things. Her favorite person is Luna, her dog, um, who loves her and she loves them tremendously. Susie is very easy to get to know. She has a seemingly endless supply of energy. She has a beautiful smile, as you can see, a great sense of humor, a love of laughter, her glass is always half full, and she can find the positive side in just about anything. She loves people and will go out of her way to help a friend as exhibited by right now. She is on Sunday afternoon walking the dog of a friend who is going through cancer treatment um, after church. She is will tell you more about her religious um, and spiritual development. But I can tell you that she has a great love of this congregation, of this church, and of the people in this church. I count her as a very dear friend, and I am excited for you to get to know more about Susie. So here you are. Thank you, thank you, Martha. That was really very, very sweet. Uh, you said everything I paid you to say. <laughs> so um, can you hear me without the microphone? Uh, would you just speak into the okay, microphone? Okay, I will we'll speak into the hearing. microphone. But you can unmute it. Carry it. Carry it. I could. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That could be dangerous. <laughs> Let's try it. Okay, so thank you for showing up this morning. I really appreciate that my badgering worked and you all showed up. Uh, we're going to start with a game this morning. And the game is called Two Truths and a Lie. And what I'm going to do is tell you three things about myself. Two of them are true, and one's a big fat lie. So what, what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to tell you the three things real quickly. Then I will say, okay, who thinks number one is a lie? And you just raise your hand. You don't win any prizes. There's nothing to, to win. But um, so number one, um, Martha already mentioned I'm a golfer. I've golfed seriously for 45 years, and my only hole-in-one was the very first year I started golfing. So hole-in-one of the first year. Number two, I've done a fire walk, where I walk on those red-hot colts. Number three, I have a black belt in four different martial arts, so I have four black belts. So if you know me and you know the answers, don't tell your neighbor, because then you will be disqualified from not winning anything. <laughs> okay, so it's either the hole-in-one, the firewalk, or the black belts. So just raise your hand. Who thinks the lie is I got my uh, own hole-in-one in the first year I golfed? Okay. Who thinks the lie is I've done a firewalk? Okay, and who thinks that I lie is I have four black belts? Well, <laughs> now you're not gonna find out the answer until I finish my talk because I'm going to weave the answers into the talk. Um, we all have lots and lots of stories we can tell about our lives, so what I thought I'd do 
is take my church life. And if we were creating a fabric, the thread of me going to church, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's missing and then sometimes it's there again. So I'm going to kind of weave the, these stories I've chosen on my ch whether I went to church or not. And I'm going to start with the last thing I'm going to say. So I'm giving you the very last part of my talk first. And this is how it, it will end. About, about a year ago, I'd been at the church for 10 years, and I thought, it's time I gave back to the church in a more significant way. So I ran for the board. There were three spots and four people. And as we all know, I was not elected, and I was so truly in my heart happy because I, I read the bios of those other three people, and I said, this church is in good hands. Then they asked me if I would be, the board asked me if I'd be a clerk, and I didn't like that word, clerk. <laughs> so I said, what is that? And they said, well, you will take the minutes of the board meetings. I said, well, if you call me the queen of all things recording, I will do it. I think it was Steve Carmichael who said, we'll call you anything as long as you'll do it. <laughs> and then a few months later, the treasurer position opened up. And um, given my history with all the treasurers on other boards and bookkeeping and all that, they, I said, sure, I'll do that. That's the end of the talk. OK, so let's rewind. I think I'll just put this down for a sec. Can you still hear me? Yes. So let's just rewind right now back to the beginning. Um, and we'll start weaving that fabric together. Many of you are old enough to remember the TV show Ozzie and Harriet. Well, my parents were Walter and Harriet. And you could probably have just filmed us as well because we uh, are, were real typical medical, middle America and I was the baby of the family. I have an older brother, well, he's gone now, and then I have an older sister in California. I grew up mostly in Houston from fourth grade on. And we were Methodists. I can't stand being back here. So we were Methodists. Um, we always went to the Methodist church. And I was trying to think about how I started out. And I went to Sunday school. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I didn't like it. I happened to talk to my sister last week. And she confirmed these three things about Sunday school. Well, I don't know if tomboy is an okay word to use anymore, but that's what I was called back in those days. I loved boy sports, and I hated wearing dresses with bows. So we would go to Sunday school and have to wear a dress with a bow. But what I hated about it, I had to sit still in a chair, so I was bored stiff. Um, the number two thing is I like talking and I like reading, but I didn't like reading out loud. And they had us uh, giving us a kiddo, kiddo Bible with those long names. And I stumbled over those names. And I, I just was embarrassed to read out loud. We had to do it every single Sunday. And this is kind of, I hope this isn't offending anyone, but do you know if I say, oh, lady, perfume smell? Yeah. <laughs> I know the woman that, that volunteered for our class was lovely and very generous with her time. But ugh, we still kind of cringe when we think about that smell. <laughs> Susie, Susie, you can push that whole thing forward, then you wouldn't be so far back and forth. Yeah. Or if you feel better using the, um, oh, no, this, this, this is fine. I don't want to complicate, but thank you anyway. The, this will be okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Then I'm not behind this big thing. Sorry. Oh, this will be a little better, because all I really have to do is just look at this for reminders. <laughs> so um, I grew up a Methodist, and uh, that's what we weren't a religious family. We didn't do a lot of prayer at meals and so forth. But um, so, uh, let's see. Oh, and the church I went to in Houston sat, sat about 1,000 people. But it felt really warm and comfy and family. It was just an amazing place. So once I got to go to church rather than Sunday school, I loved it. I wore the little pillbox hat and the little white gloves and the little outfit. You know, some of you know what I'm talking about. And loved church. I loved the music and, and the people and just everything about it. Um, I attended SMU, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. And I graduated in 1970, 
and I got my bachelor's in business administration, and they asked us to say what our major was back in those days, and my major was called quantitative analysis. And all that means really is computer math, because they, it was a, just on the pioneering edge of computers. It was really exciting to get my degree in that. And um, we had, the group I grew up with, we did certain things. You graduate from college, you get a corporate job, you find somebody and get married and start a family. And I definitely got through to the corporate jobs phase. Uh, <laughs> um, I worked for a company in Houston called Petroleum Information. And what we did, it was so cool, we had all these electronic computery things and remember the key punch cards and all that. And we would get, take all this information and run it through all these crazy machines and give the, uh, the geologists information on where to drill for oil. But I was getting really tired of living in Houston. So I asked for a transfer to Denver because our company had an office in Denver and they transferred me to Denver. And then when I got to Denver, several things happened. Now, when I was in Houston, I continued to go to church, right? As soon as I got to Denver, early 1970s, eh, didn't even look for a church. Um, and I went to a class called Taekwondo, which is uh, a, a Korean martial art. Thought, I'm gonna try this. I loved it. I was a natural. I went to tournaments and would fight in tournaments. I just loved it. So I started doing Taekwondo, but there's also quite a bit of discipline and you know, training that goes with that. I wasn't, um, I wasn't real happy with my job at Petroleum Information anymore, but in those days, you didn't just switch jobs. So I called my father and I said, Daddy, I want to get a new job. What do I do? How do I find a new job? And he goes, well, honey, let me find out and I'll call you back. <laughs> he knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy who was the top wizzo at First National Bank in Denver. So, uh, and that was the big boss bank. So I went in there with my high heels and my corporate suit and I, my resume and I said, sir, could you help me find another job? I, I don't know where to look. And he looked my resume, looked at me and he said, well, we want you. So I started going to, I'm working there. Now do any of you know what a mainframe, mainframe computer is? They're huge. Well, our bank had big, huge rooms of mainframe computers and my job was to go out to the little banks that were still using pencil and paper, and we converted them onto our computer system. It was the coolest job. I mean, I really loved it. And then I met Mr. Wright. Six foot six, blonde hair, blue eyes, top of his class from Stanford. I thought, goody, now I can do the next part of this thing. I can meet a man, get married, and have, start a family. And that was the perfect thing until he dumped me. <gasps> Major heartbreak. I mean, shattering everywhere. I went home to my parents for a couple of weeks because I knew they'd say things like, he doesn't deserve you, you know, things like that. So I felt much better. But when I came back to Denver, I, my heart wasn't in it anymore. I didn't want to do my corporate job anymore. I didn't want to be in the same town with Mr. Perfect. So I walked away from the corporate world and into what I call my wild years. A friend of mine had a restaurant in Colorado Springs. Still not going to church, by the way. Okay, we, we've forgotten church for a while, so that thread is missing right now. In Colorado Springs, um, I found a Taekwondo school down there, so I continued training in that. And um, let's, oh, and then I was hiking in the Rocky Mountains. Now, when people ask me if I have children, I say my children have four legs. So we found Oz, my dog, but when, when we first found him, several other people took him and I didn't like how they were treating him. So this is my boy I had for 16 years. <laughs> and for those of you that want a description, he's a, he's a German Shepherd mutt. So um, this is my Oz boy. I don't know if that'll stay up. Maybe not, we'll just lay him down. Um, and he went everywhere with me and, and 
and I loved it. And then I was serving drinks in this gorgeous restaurant that is cousins to what, if you remember the North Bank before it was McMenamin's, there, that's a cousin to that restaurant, it's kind of like that, but at the foot of the Pikes Peak, it was just gorgeous. And um, that when I say wild years, I was the tamest of all, I was kind of like the den mother of all these wonderful people, we, I call them a village, at the, re at the restaurant. We were all good friends. The owner said, hey, you know about numbers, and um, I need my girlfriend as the bookkeeper. She was this beautiful artist. She was not a bookkeeper, but he <laughs> wanted to give her something to do. So I was gonna do the books two days a week, and I said, I can probably figure that out. So he showed me around the office. Now in those days, do you remember if you used your credit card, there was that machine that went and then you signed it and you kept your paper copy and the cardboard copy stayed with the company. Well, um, pretty uh, artist lady, uh, I, I went in there and I sat down at the desk and opened a drawer and it was filled with the cardboard copies. Thousands of dollars worth of sales that never got to the bank. So I showed it to the, I wasn't, I just said, these need to go to the bank. So I became the bookkeeper for the, for the restaurant for that. Um, and I was still training in martial arts and still not going to church. Now, imagine if we were all in the restaurant and we were like a village. We were best buddies, we did everything together. We sadly drank a lot together and, and most of the other people did other substances. I tried a couple, I'm like, eh, I don't see the thrill in that. But, um, we all decided, and I've never owned the restaurant, but we all decided to move west to Chico, California. <laughs> and opened up a restaurant there. I set up the books. It was very fun. I couldn't find a Taekwondo school. But I found an amazing Tai Chi master. Oh my gosh. So I, I started training in Tai Chi. I'd gotten my black belt in Taekwondo. Now I'm in tai, doing Tai Chi. and. Uh, after some number of years of training with him, I got my black belt in Tai Chi. And then this, we all, here we are, our village, we moved up to Reading to open yet another restaurant. No Taekwondo up there, no Tai Chi, but I found Kenpo, a Chinese form. So I trained really hard. I met my, one of my very, very, very best friends. Um, she and I looked alike. We were about the same height with kind of curlyish hair and we trained together and sparred together and we'd go to tournaments and fight all the other women. And then we would end up fighting each other for the big trophy. And the referees in the, in the ring couldn't tell us apart. Because we trained together, we had the same moves, so we had t-shirts made and mine says, I'm Susie, she's Judy, you know? <laughs> so that was, that was a lot of fun. And I was still in my wild years, but I think all the martial art really helped me to stay with out of the dark bunny holes. And then there was a guy from a place called Eugene, Oregon, who came down to Reading to visit a buddy. And now this is his story, not mine. He said he met me, fell madly in love, head over heels, but I was too wild. He knew I wouldn't want to just date one person. So he was smart. For the next couple of years, he kept a touching base with me and increase that and pretty soon we started going out a lot and I really liked it a lot so we just decided to go steady and then he said well why don't you move to Eugene Oregon and live with me and I'm like I'm not doing that and he thought hmm I gotta up the ante so he proposed and that's what got me here I laughingly tell some people that I'm a mail order bride um, when I got to Eugene I couldn't find any of those other three martial arts <laughs> that I all had black belts in, right? So I found Aikido here. It's a, it's a really beautiful um, martial art. And trained in that, and guess what? Fourth black belt. Ha! <laughs> so there's the answer for one thing. <laughs> you saw that coming. Yeah. yeah. Um, sadly, I was, I was not really in love with this man, so the marriage only lasted two years. It was my bad. I didn't know exactly what I um, needed to do, and so we're still friends. Isn't that wonderful? We're still friends. Yay. Okay. Let's see. So I am still not going to church when I first get to Eugene. 
But um, I started getting really interested in Eastern religions and Eastern philosophies and mysticism and shamanism. Uh, I read Krishnamurti over and over again. And then I took a class where I could, okay, don't make fun, where I'm reading chakras and auras and past lives. And we would have little psychic fairs and people would come and have all that done and I kind of sit on the sideline like, well, I see something. So, um, <laughs> but the one thing I really did do uh, is I took a training from an amazing woman in reading tarot cards. I started a business, called, my business name is Madam Crystal Vision. And I have friends, these are my cards. There's a mandala on the back and uh, and then these are these beautiful cards. And uh, so I still have friends who say, how's the madam? You know, I, so that was, that was part of, of all that. But after I got that divorced, I also started missing church. Ha, where's that thread? I know it's here somewhere. I looked all over Eugene and I started going to Unity of the Valley. I love that church. Um, and at that church, I was there tw about 25 years and I was on the board most of those years. When I first got there, it was very small and there was no accounting system. So I set up the whole accounting system for the church started volunteering to do the books and I was working so hard they said we have to pay you. So I was on staff at this church as the bookkeeper and the treasurer, which I do not recommend. No, 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 no. You don't want that same person doing it. But it was a tiny, and I saw Nancy going, <laughs> But it was a tiny little church and we just didn't have enough people to do everything. And the church grew and it blossomed and it was wonderful until it wasn't. Um, now, they really teach tithing at this church as a spiritual practice. It's like you tithe for yourself, not to get the good stuff from God or because you have to. And there is a woman, a, a minister, a unity minister from the Deep South, her name was Edwin Gaines. And Edwin would come to different churches all over the country and give tithing classes. Well, she was going to do a week-long seminar at Mentone, Alabama, all on tithing and spiritual abundance and what's in your way. And, and it was almost like a personal growth slash spiritual seminar. And we spent a week, and guess what that ended in? Marriage. A firewalk. Uh. Oh, not a marriage. <laughs> no, a firewalk. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the firewalk. The, we worked all week long, and Edwin kept saying, now, when we do that firewalk, if you get a no, you do not walk. I mean, she's just, okay, okay, okay. So what we did is we all put the, um, that evening, we gave a log each. We are praying over the log. I said, damn right, I'm praying over this log. And, and we gave it to the guy, and he built the fire, and we went back inside for a couple hours while he... Flames were flying, and then it burned down, and then he spread 16 feet out. And, that, and so our job, we were to walk in a circle uh, around this fire silently, all in silence, and we were to ask God if we could walk. And so I start, can I walk? No. I kept getting no's. I really didn't get the yes. And now, this is in March. Golf season starts in March. You think I'm going to take a chance of burning my feet? No. So I'm doing this circle and walking, and all of a sudden I get a yes. And I, this is all, again, in silence. I said, you prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and two neon signs came into my mind's eye, a yes and a no, and the yes came on. So I, I walked up, out of the circle, walked up, and here's the 16 feet of red hot coals, and I looked down, and Edwin, by the way, was right next to everybody who walked. She was helping us. So I looked down, and she goes, don't look down. And I looked up, and then she said, walk. Now, you don't run or sprint, and you don't saunter. You just walk. So it was hot, let me tell you. It was very hot. And at the end of the walk is a bowl, a bucket of water, in case it never sticks. And so you step in the water, and then you go back in the circle. So I did that walk. Ha, by the way, that's true. 
Wow. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's unfair. I've golfed all this time. I still don't have a damn hole in one. What is wrong with that? Where are the golf gods? So I went back in the circle and I thought, I'll ask again. So I asked again and um, no's, no, no's, and then I got the yes and I did the whole thing again. I said, you prove it. And the neon yes came on. So I, this time I walked a second time, did not burn. So that was pretty amazing uh, to do that. After about 25 years, I left Unity. Um, the church for the last two years was going in a direction that I didn't agree with. I thought was what happened to the essence of our heart. And not that they were wrong, but they were. But, um, <laughs> but I, I just, I really, it was torture. It was stress. The, the joy was gone. I looked everywhere for it. I couldn't find the joy. So I left the church. Now, Jenny Allen is a golfing friend of mine, and many of you know Jenny. So I saw her out at Shadow, and I said, Jenny, I'm looking for a church. And she, her, here's her big sales pitch. You might like mine. <laughs> so I came the next Sunday morning. Martha, you might have been right behind me on that Sunday, too. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, this, this is what I've been looking for. It brought in my Methodist kind of more traditional church of, of listening to scripture and hymns and actually saying the word Jesus. And some of the beautiful things I loved about Unity, where they make the lessons relevant to our lives. Sometimes you feel like you're the only one that the pastor is talking to. So I just loved it. And um, <clears throat> then, so I, so I joined the church, and some amount of time went by, and Jenny said, hey, you know, on the third Sundays, we have a drop-in choir. Why don't you sing with us? I said, okay. So I went there, <clears throat> tried to sing with the altos, and that didn't work, huh, Jenny? You know what I'm talking about. So, are you too, Martha? So, so I moved over to the Pat, the tenor, Judy, the tenor. I'm looking at all the women tenors in here. The tenor section, and um, it was the only woman tenor at the time. But I, on that first Sunday, I thought, these guys really know how to sight read. They're so good. They really know this song. And I was bumbling along. Well, I didn't know they'd been rehearsing it for weeks on Wednesday nights. So... I stayed with the choir, and it, that was uh, fun. Now, I'm going to take just a step away from the choir for a minute and come back to about a year after I was in church. Our bookkeeper, Sue, was ready to leave. She, she'd done her job here, and Jonathan had just come on board. and So I was asked to go into the office and look at the bookkeeping. Uh, so I went in there and chatted with Sue, and... While she did her books differently than I would have done them, it wasn't wrong. She did them just fine. It, but I was thinking, oh, I do this and this and this. But when she left, they asked, someone asked me if I would be the bookkeeper, and that was a hard no, <laughs> as you can imagine after what happened at Unity. Um, but I said, let me, I'll volunteer for just a little while while I try to find somebody, and I found a business friend of mine who said, oh, you're looking for a bookkeeper for your church? Well, my niece is a bookkeeper. Her name is Kim Dore. <laughs> is that the best or ever? She's a rock star in the world of book, bookkeeping. So uh, she came in and we introduced her to Jonathan and everything went fine. And I kind of held her hand for about a minute but that's all she needed. I just wanted to make sure she was comfortable with the situation, and she and I were so lined up with what changes needed to be done in the, in the bookkeeping. So, so after that, I left that end of the building for the next eight or nine years and came all the way back down in here. <coughs> and so, uh, excuse me, so on the choir, back to the choir, um, the, I was, was coming on the third Sunday, some Christmas was coming up. And um, Greg, the then, or Greg Soika, our, our director, music director then, and he said, well, we've got Christmas music, so 
um, he told me I needed to come Wednesday nights if I wanted to sing the Christmas music because I needed to rehearse it. So, <laughs> so uh, I went, who is this? I forgot. I wanted to show you a golfing friend of mine. This is Arnold Palmer. <laughs> I didn't really play golf with him. I just got to meet him. And this was like, you know, the, the highlight of my golfing world. Oh, what, a, what a guy. What a man. Anyway, um, back to the choir. So I went to rehearsals right here in this room, and we were singing all the Christmas music, and everything was fun. And then Greg said, so the festival choir people may leave, and the chancel choir stay. And I, oh, I don't know what choir I'm in. I had no idea. I'd never heard the word chancel before. Sorry, but I hadn't. I didn't, any, I didn't know what, anyway, so I stayed. And that's how I ended up in the choir. <laughs> um, la and then some number of months ago, Jessica, you asked, invited um, Jennifer Solomon to come to the front and talk about bells. So bell choir, I've, never, I've seen the white gloves, but that's as close as I've ever come to ringing bells, just looking at their gloves. So I decided, what the heck? Why not try it? So I started ringing bells, and so I'm gonna put a little plug out right now. If any of you sing, and you can read music, you kinda of have to read music, but if any of you sing, I wanna invite you to contact Jared or come to the first rehearsal or something. Come and see if you wanna sing in the choir. If Dan's shaking his head, yes. If you're lucky enough, you'll stand in front of him <laughs> so you can hear him. Uh, and th we would love to have him carol. I just, there's choir members all over the place here. If you don't sing, you can read music and you love music, come talk to Je Jennifer Solomon. Come and ring bells with us. It is like fairyland up there. I am not kidding you. It's just something really special. And Jennifer makes it lots of fun. So I'm encouraging any of you who can read music no excuses, and I'm not talking to the person next to you, I'm talking to you, okay? All right. Uh, see if I forgot anything wonderful. No, so last year, I was thinking I should give back to the church more significant. See how I brought it back to that last set, that, you know, I brought the end, right? So anyway, that's pretty much, I have other stories, but I that's pretty much what I had uh, in my outline to talk about here today. Uh, and th I love this church. It's, it's really a spectacular home for my, my spiritual heart. I really enjoy meeting each of you and getting to know you in different, I see some dinners for eight people here. Uh, if, you, if we ever do that again, I strongly recommend that you get in the dinners for eight group and there's discipline. There's, so what I was reading in this book that Jessica's having us study right now is that big mega churches, like 5,000 people mega churches, the way they are successful is that they have um, small groups. And so if you are not in a small group of some sort in this church, I encourage you to, to come sing and ring bells or, and or get involved with one of the smaller um, groups. So there, there you go. Well, she didn't disappoint, I don't think at all. Um, that was a fantastic oh, thank you. presentation. Thank you thank very you. much. We have about 10 minutes for questions. Uh, and if you do have a question, raise your hand. I'll bring you the microphone. We use the microphone so that everyone can hear. So we're open for questions. So when I would fight in those tournaments, um, we didn't try to hurt each other. We weren't going after like punching through like the boxers do. What we would go in, I would use Martha, but I don't want to afraid, uh, scare her because her shoulder <laughs> might still be. But what we would do is we'd go ba boom and just just that hard or that hard. It's not we weren't trying to hurt each other, and so it was like playing tag. And when I, my friend Judy and I would get into those final fights. They lasted forever because the referees were like, we'd score at the same time. It was just so much fun. So. <laughs>
And I think we met, we probably not met, but we knew each other before 2012 I because so. I sang in Inspirational Sounds. Yes. And Unity was one of the places that we sang every year, not once more than mm -hmm. once every okay. year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, the, the, at, at Unity, when the Inspirational Sounds sang, the windows fogged up, literally fogged up. <laughs> it was so exciting. So, yeah, yeah. Brenda. Is your sister, I'm on my way. I can say it really fast. Is your sister as interesting as you are? <laughs> no. So the question is, is my sister as interesting as I am? That's a great question. We couldn't be more unalike. Uh, she doesn't play bridge. She doesn't play golf. Um, you know, she likes foods that I don't eat, and all. It's just amazing. But uh, she ha she's brilliant in her own. She's fascinating in her own way. Um, brilliant, ha uh, always in the master classes in school, and so forth. Um, she has a special needs daughter that she's very involved with. So uh, she's down in the San Pedro area near Long Beach. And um, the most, I, w we are studying generosity. There's a class I'm in called Cultivating a Generous Congregation. And we were asked to come up with the most generous person we know, and that's my sister. She has a heart of gold and can't walk by somebody without give, you know, trying to give them something that will help them. And um, so she, she is interesting, but in a, her talk would be very different from mine. She wasn't a tomboy. She was just, she was intellectual. Yeah, thank you for asking. <laughs> I loved hearing about your, all your martial arts <laughs> experiences. I've been doing Tai Chi for 22 years. Nice. So I'm just wondering, are you still involved in a martial art here, or have you kind of let that go? That, thank you for asking. Um, Mar I did. I was so dynamic in the way I trained with fighting and going to tournaments that my body was really getting damaged. And so even though you think Tai Chi doesn't have anything you could get hurt with, the Tai Chi teacher I had was, we had our class, I'm going to tell you just real quickly, we had our classes outside in Chico. and. We would do things like he would climb up a tree and walk out on a limb and pounce on us. Oh. And we didn't know it was coming, and we had to use our Tai Chi, you know, like, Wah! and so, um, so it, it was a very dynamic form of Tai Chi that uh, I could still do the form, and that's, that's about all my body can take anymore. So that's, but that's why I moved into golf, because my body just couldn't take the, the, uh, excitement anymore. Yeah. How do you see this church in the context of what's happening uh, locally, nationally, globally? Uh, we're, we're going through a period of crisis. And how does that affect this church and where does it put this church? I wish I had a really good answer for you, David. Um, this is, I tend to be, as Martha said, a cup half full person. So what I'm seeing with this church is the community is very strong and the connection we have with one another uh, is a huge plus. I can only affect what's in right here. I mean, we can't, I can't make you change your mind. I can't make Judy do something. So what I see us doing is affecting in smaller circles here and um, like a ripple in the water, you know, dropping a pebble in the water, and the ripple hopefully will go out. Also, I think it's really important how we have a good positive attitude here. And uh, I didn't get into all the metaphysics and the quantum physics, but um, our thinking is so important. And so my belief is as we continue to think in a positive way, uh, I can't solve the Ukraine process problem, but I can pray for, this is what I used to do. I used to, um, when Saddam Hussein was still alive, I used to pray for him that his aura would crack just a little bit and I could send pink light in. So that's kind of weird, I know, but th that's the kind of thing I would, I have done to try to help the global situation. But thank you for your thoughtful question. That, that was, that's good to things to think about. Another question? What about your business right now? 
Oh, I have a bookkeeping and payroll service that I've had since the beginning of time. I think Jesus was my first client. Uh, and I work from home, and I love my clients. Um, I, it, it, if somebody wants me to be their new bookkeeper, I really have to think about it, talk about it, and if I don't think it's something I want to spend that time on, uh, I'll turn them to someone else that I think can do a better job. So um, my business is fun. I care about each client. People think, you're a bookkeeper? You don't act like one. Well, <laughs> it's true. But it's, it's also, I have genu genuine care for each one of my clients. And so um, right now, I, I'm as full as I want to be unless just the right person comes along. What about your new dog? So I've had, I've had Luna and Scrappy are, are pit bulls. And I adopted them in 2019 from um, um, Lovables. And Scrappy was a f 15 at the time I got him. And, and Luna, had, as a puppy, was bonded to him and grew up with him. So I, she's about 11 now. But when I got him, she was about 8. And he was about 14 or so. He only made it a year. And, and I had to let him go. And Luna is now becoming a little old lady. And if you come to my house, she will put on her pillbox hat and her white gloves and wag her tongue, Carol, and, and Judy, wag her tail, well, you know Pat, she babysit Luna, and say, may I serve you tea and cookies? I mean, she's just a sweet little old lady now and mellowed out. So, um, you know, I'm just grateful that they came into my life because I don't have a family and I, our kids or stuff, and it, they are my family, so they're wonderful. I, Thank you for asking about Luna. I'll let her know you asked. <laughs> and Pat, by the way, is a dog, a pet sitter. And she sat with Luna for a week while I was in California. And they really bonded. It was so sweet. So, Carol. That picture of you with the other dog, is that really you? Yep. Yes. Yes, this is me in, I was in my, I was in my mid-20s maybe. And, you know, hair down to there. And, and when I did martial arts, I could tie my hair back like Brent is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Oz was just, uh, he was, I never owned a leash with Oz. Uh, so when we would go, um, I could get on my, on my bicycle uh, and ride all over, say, Redding, California. I could go to the mall there and, um, go inside, park my bike, and he'd just sit by the bike and wait for me without a leash. I don't know if that was smart, but that's how we did it. And I'd come back half hour later, whatever, and there he was just waiting for me. Hi, Mom. Let's go run. So I, I cried for six months after when I had to put him down. He, he was my, my just everywhere with me. So yeah, he's a good boy. And that is, that is me. It's hard to believe. Sorry, here, I'll, I'll cover that part of it. <laughs> now, was Bethel Church in Reading when you were there? Uh, I don't know, because I wasn't doing church in, in those okay. days. That was where the thread had stopped. So. It's a big and very interesting congregation. There. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, one of the mega churches that has some very interesting practices. Okay. That ends our time. We are actually at 9.45, and we have, we have enough time to get to, get to count. Next week? Next week, we get to hear from Steve Carmichael, our retiring uh, yeah. uh, moderator. That's what you call him. Yeah. So we'll hear all about whatever pulled him to this church. And thank you, Susie. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, all. That was fantastic.